Hi, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, the system operator for Errata Online, and I'm making a series of videos here to show the capabilities of the Plato based Errata Online system, a new online community that I am setting up for the benefit of retro computing enthusiasts. This particular online service has its roots in the Plato system, which goes all the way back to 1962 and was in operation commercially as late as 2015 when NovaNet finally shut down. Thanks to the efforts of CyberOne.org, a distribution of Cybus was made available and I have taken this distribution and customized it for the benefit of retro computing users. And I hope you guys find this as fun and as useful as I do. To start, we can go to the Errata Online website at errata.online and you will see here uh, a nice information page which I am still adding to not only showing you some of the capabilities of the system but where to download the needed software uh, currently for PCs as well as for uh, Atari systems here as well as the connection information that you need as well. You also get a nice uh, little slideshow here of various screenshots showing through the system and hopefully when I get the videos done the videos will be, show will be here as well. So let's go ahead and sign up. Signing up is easy enough. I don't really need to track, I don't track anything that's going to be put into the uh, data policy page and basically all I need is a full name. I do need a working email address so that I can send your confirmation email back and the desired sign-on that you want. You can have up to 16, uh, 18 characters in a sign-on. So you can type your whole name if you're here if you wish or simply just Bob. And the desired group that you want to be in we have a few groups here. I'll take and add more at anyone's request. Uh, for now, I'll take and say that we're in the Atari group. Now here's a special section here for create an author sign-on. What's an author sign-on? Well, if you see it, actually, oops, eh, I will take and go back now. <laughs> if you actually take and look at the author sign-on, what it is, it basically shows you, it creates a second uh, account in the author group uh, that allows you to create new software to run on Errata Online. You get access to the programming environment, you get access to all of the editors, uh, you have permission at that point to ask for lesson space so that you can add, so that you can create your own software. It's very useful. It's a secondary sign-on that works in uh, that works alongside your primary sign-on, and you, you're placed in the author group. So, if Bob were to have an author sign-on, it would be Bob at author and Bob at Atari for his normal one. So two sign-ons. So once you do that, of course. You, uh, you basically are taken. Say, okay, sign up's done. Like you saw there, just a moment, a moment before. Please uh, be patient. Uh, I'm still cleaning up and refining bits and pieces of bugs as I find them. So, uh, please bear with us. So, with that, uh, I go ahead and I create the account. Once that's happened, you receive an email from me stating that your account has been created, and at that particular point you can then log into the system. Now, <laughs> again, please watch out for falling rocks here because I'm uh, doing this as fast as I can. Once you log into the system, you're presented with a login screen here. This login screen will change. I haven't gotten around to changing it yet. You enter in your username, as you specified, your sign-on, and the group that you're with. Since I haven't logged on yet, it's asking me to choose a particular password. No problem, I will do so.
and it's saying, please remember this password. Now with this, we're automatically put into the main menu. Now, this is a custom menu that I have written for the benefit of the users of Errata Online. I will be extending it, refining it, making it better as time goes on here. But the basic idea is going to be the same. You can either select in each individual items either by pressing the letters or uh, if you have a touch display uh, or use the joystick on the Atari terminal, you can, call it, you can select items in this fashion too. Selecting an item goes to that particular menu. And as you can see here, here's the games menu and whatnot. To get back to the main menu, uh, it's simple enough. You just press the back key. Now one thing to really note here, uh, if you're using P-Term as an example, uh, there is a help menu and in the help menu there is a window for P-Term keyboard, which gives you a visual chart of all the keys in the system and their shortcut equivalents. So uh, that will be definitely helpful for you starting out, for you guys starting out. So hitting back goes back to the main menu and one of the nice features of this particular system no matter where you are if you leave yourself if you leave in a menu and you log off you will return back to that point so if I exit at this point shift stop to exit or shift F10 and P turn and log back on again You'll find that it asked me for my password, but it also you'll also find that it automatically put me back in the menu that I was before. So, uh, some other bits and pieces here. Uh, you'll notice on the bottom we have a uh, common menu that's across all of the uh, that's across all of the menus in the system here. Uh, particularly of, of use are the help menu. The help menu gives you a number of lessons to show you how to use the keyboard, how to uh, an introduction to the tutor language, an introduction to using notes, which I will go over in just a minute, and a special lesson that concentrates on the Plato keyboard. We'll be adding more lessons in, in here as time goes on. Again, pressing back, back to the main menu. And we also have the ability to uh, talk, which is a multi-user talk system that's available to everyone inside the system here. We have here, um, what we have here are a number of channels and each channel up to five people can join. And once joined, uh, the text uh, that you type will be uh, will be instantly displayed across the other terminals here. So let's say, for example, I will take and log in uh, on another terminal here. Just a moment. Okay, and I will take and join channel zero with me as my admin here. And you'll see that now admin is available. And as I type, the text shows up immediately. As does the text that I type back to the admin. Text is, yeah, like I said, it's just, uh, it, works a bit like the old school uh, VBS chat systems. Quite nice, I think. So once you leave, no problem if admin leaves, his text goes away. And I'll go ahead and leave as well, hitting shift stop. Boom. And anytime you hit shift stop to uh, exit, 
you, uh, you're given the opportunity to press the data key to continue working, which means uh, puts you back where you were on the main menu uh, or hitting shift stop to sign off. I'll hit data to continue. We're back in the main menu. And we can see other parts of the system. There are a lot of interesting things that are, that are available here. Uh, the classic Plato catalog of lessons is here. I won't go into that except here in here. I'll take care of that in a separate video because it's a large system. There are over 16,000 lessons in the catalog, so feel free to root around in there. There's the games menu, which gives you access to a wide variety of multiplayer games. Just as an example, we'll go ahead and do air fight. And for each one, it gives you a description of each of the games. So you can see whether or not you want to play them or not. We'll go ahead and hit data. Welcome to air fight. And we'll go ahead and enter air fight here. Of course, you can always hit the help key to learn how to play. And this is a complete help lesson for this particular game. So it takes you through a tutorial of how, of how to play the entire game. We'll go ahead and uh, back out. Now, shift next. There we go. Now, go ahead and enter air fight. Eh, well, half of my plane for, for fuel. How many missiles? I get a max of 16, so I'll say 16. You're now loaded with 9,800 pounds. And we can see right here that we have a uh, first person display of a flight simulator display. Now, I'm not very good at this, so I'll crash almost immediately, but I just wanted to show this actually working. I'm hitting the next key here to, to update. And you can see that with this, yeah, we just kind of. And I crashed. But there you go. And there's air fight. Oops. And if for some reason you get knocked off for one reason or another, no problem. You can log back in and you'll pick you'll pick right back up where you left off. Just like that. Uh, some of the other games include uh, a nice little battleship. Uh, the second page has a uh, an inter-terminal game of dogfight, which is this like much simpler than air fight. You just move the arrow keys around and try to shoot each other. Empire, which is a uh, uh, you can think of it as a Star Trek conquest type game multiplayer. You can play a version of Go either with the computer or with other players. Uh, the first microcomputer version of Mahjong showed up here on Plato. It's here as well. Uh, Moon War is uh, a very simple version of Space War. Uh, if you know Space War from the PDP-1 type stuff, two ships shooting each other with or without gravity. Moria, which is a, uh, uh, a, a very early M uh, multiplayer uh, RPG type game. And finally, Tank War, which is, you can think of it as a combat, you know, kind of a, a hex-type combat game on steroids. And, you know, I can go ahead and just show that here. Bang. Okay. Panzerkrieg. Enter the game. And this is, uh, this is particularly an example of what's called a big board game. Uh, what we have here are a list of players that you want to be able to play uh, that you want to be able to play against. And in order to facilitate this, we have a particular special feature which we call term talk. And if you can, if if you know the pers other person's name that you want to talk to to bring them in there, then you can do that. I will do that. Uh, I will go ahead and do that. I will take and talk to my admin user here. If I hit the term key and then type talk. I can then type in the name of the user, in this case admin who's in the system group, but it could be just someone else, no big deal. 
and we'll go ahead and term and I will talk and as you can see this is available uh, this is a two-line uh, chat facility that's available anywhere within the system even within games here so I'm gonna say let's play tank war yay okay no problem so with that uh, we will take and uh, I'll exit out we're out of talk and I will go to the games menu here on my admin side. I will go to Tank War. Enter the game. And now we will see that admin has shown up. and I can now play against him. Shift next. Shift next. And we now have the ability to shake and change uh, to select different uh, scenarios. That means backgrounds, forests, that sort of thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and do a small one here. Okay, I will be uh, the Germans and I will be the Americans and at this particular point we can read the scenario description we can read the scenario description things that we need to do etc and at this particular point now we actually have the game that we can play here and we get the option to do things like deploy units I'm gonna take and use my admin here to deploy some units here I'll take and deploy a unit over here you can use your arrow key etc to figure out where you want to deploy shift next okay now there we are etc etc and it's you as you can see it's a turn-based war game here quite nice quite nice we'll go ahead and stop this here for now bye bye and with that continue on to where we were and as you can see more things that we need to take and uh, debug here but no big deal so there are lots of games here, lots of things that you can, lots of games that we can actually take and play against. But more importantly, there's a, there's a whole development environment here that authors, that all of us authors can can literally take and come together to make new content for this entire system, and that is very important to note. Another aspect of the system is the notes feature, and. As far as this is concerned, this is equivalent to uh, forums in modern, uh, in modern online parlance. So as we can see here, we have some uh, basic notes files here uh, that are pretty much global. Things for system announcements. A public notes file, which is just one big miscellaneous drawer that anybody can talk into about anything. Uh, help and support, which is specific for uh, sp just specific things like requesting lesson space, requesting additional sign-ons, asking to fix things, etc. You will see that in just a moment. Atari-related notes files uh, and other and other notes files here too. We also have what's called the notes file sequencer, which I will get into in another video, which allows you to specify a series of notes files that you want to watch and to be notified when. Uh, and, and to be notified when new notes actually show up in here. So with that, let's go ahead. If we go ahead and hit the next page, we'll actually wind up on the help and support notes files. If we hit next page after that, we get to the Atari notes files. And finally, the last page is the other notes files here. So uh, we go ahead, say help and support notes files. We see frequently asked questions, place here where, where users can ask general questions about the system. Uh, help desk, um, basically help something's wrong. 
uh, or I don't understand something. Tutor discussions, this is a special notes file here for authors so that we can teach each other how to program in Tutor. Fix list, this is, oh crap, something's broken, it's an emergency, please fix it as quickly as possible. And the request file is ultimately used for asking requests of the system's operator, such as adding lesson space, uh, you know, so you can make your own lessons, uh, getting additional sign-ons, that sort of thing. So next page after that, the Atari-based notes files. Uh, Atari 8-bit computers, 2600 game consoles, these are different forms for those types of things. And one thing that you'll notice here for the individual notes files here, you will actually see in quotes uh, the name of the notes file. So if you just want to use the go feature to go directly to that note, you can. Or if you're in author mode and you want to be able to access that notes file, this is the name of the notes file. Moving on here, we'll take and show, we also have uh, other forms here, Commodore 8-bit, Commodore Amiga, TI-99, 4A, Apple II, etc. So let's go ahead and go into one of these. I will take and go back to the Atari 8-bit computers line here. And we will actually see here we have our notes file. We have a description of the notes, the file that we're in, and a list of the notes in the file here. Uh, to read a note, all you do is press its number. Uh, if there are responses, you will see the number of responses that are actually here in the note. And actually, I will go ahead and go into the first notes here. And we can see the note actually written here. It's just a nice little welcome note from the admin. Uh, of special note here as well, some of the uh, unique parts of the Plato text system. You'll notice that this is in double-sized text. You can do things like double-sized text, uh, drawing custom characters by drawing them on top of each other, all sorts of interesting things that uh, just are not possible on ASCII-based displays. So I'm going to take and actually uh, reply to this particular note. How do I do that? As usual, help is available and you can see the uh, different keys that you can type to do different functions. I want to respond to this note, so I will hit Shift Lab to respond to the note. Go back, Shift Lab to respond to the note, and I will uh, actually use local editor here. You can use either the system editor or the local editor. The local editor is easier to use. And if you make a mistake, whatever, go back. As always, help, uh, help sense, health context sensitive stuff, uh, help is always available. You can see how to do all the different functions, etc. And when you're done, shift next. And there's the note. Now, if we go back, shift back, for example, we can see that there's now a response there on the note. We can either start, we can either read the note or we can go right to it. So that's a that's a that's a crash course of uh, the notes the, of the note system here. Pretty simple. I will take and make a bigger video of this in more detail, but for now this is just a simple introduction. If we back out. We come back into the main notes display here and we can go into another notes file, whatever. Now, there's a special, uh, there's a special form of notes called personal notes, which allows you to send uh, notes to other users on the system. And at any time, for example, if someone sends you a note, you will be notified within a few seconds of that note being sent. I'll go ahead and send one to me right now. Go ahead and send that out. And you can see at that particular moment, 
you now have a notification up here in the top section of the, of the notes here saying that you have personal notes. Um, currently you have to go back to the main menu, although I will take and refine this a bit better so that we can take and get to personal notes from any point on the system here. So uh, we'll go back to the main menu. And we can see that uh, we have personal notes. It will update here in just a moment. And we see an arrow here pointing to personal notes. And it will take you immediately to your next unread note. Be sure to explain the monitor mode feature. Yeah, I'll do that in just a moment. So um, at any given time, let's see here. So that's uh, personal notes. We'll go ahead and delete this particular note here, you know, help help for other options and you can see shift help to delete the note okay we'll back out shift help and we can have the option to undo it at any given time but we'll just go ahead and delete it here and we'll back out no more notes we can send notes to other people do whatever so uh, sending a note is as simple as reading them almost so to do that We'll go ahead and send a note off to Tom here. Always use the, use the local system here. Uh, when we figure out how to take and connect other systems, we can take and send notes to other systems as well. So uh, we'll go ahead and send a new note. And just like in just like in the general notes section, you can reply you can reply to personal notes directly. If you uh, use the same mechanism to reply, it will automatically send back a reply to uh, to the uh, to the original recipient. Now, of note, one of the nice things that we have here is that we also have the ability to edit notes as well. So if you send a note and you realize, oh crud, I need to actually take and edit it, you can actually go back and uh, you can actually go ahead and, fi and fix the note. Something that's missing from uh, various email systems. So, back, actually, I'll go ahead and send that out again, sorry. Again. next and the note is sent off and I will receive it very shortly within a few seconds so with that there's the personal notes go back and of course you saw Talkomatic the only other portion here really worth showing right off the top of the head here is the bulletins feature and this is where this will actually be expanded out and I will put all sorts of uh, quick system announcements maybe we'll have a section for for graphic art that we can take and put up something just uh, another place to basically land content so with that some of the other features that we have uh, we have the go feature so if you know exactly where you want to go such as to the Atari 8 notes file it will take you there automatically you can also use it to uh, to find lessons that are not in the menu, uh, such as a version of Othello that I am working on, as you can see. So we'll take and exit out there. Data continue working. Um, some of the other bits and pieces that we have uh, are the user list, so you can find out if people are on. Now, of special note here, actually, it looks like I need to make one little adjustment to Bob's account. 
If this happens for some reason and you can't see the user list, please contact me and I will take and make the appropriate change so that you can see the user list. It's just a slight security thing that I have to take and change. So I will go ahead and change that now, right here while I'm giving the demo. Come on. And since I'm logged on, I need to actually pull off before I can do this. So give me a second. Let me change this a bit. Mm -hmm. And finally, in the notes. We'll go ahead and log back on. And as we can see, we were actually here in the game section here. I'll go ahead and go back to the main menu here. If we go to users, we'll now see that we have access to the user section. Now, by default, you are not visible on the user list unless you explicitly say, I want to be visible on the user list. So to do that, we go and press the lab key to go to the user flags here and we'll turn on the user flags that I know I want to that I know I want to see. I want to appear in the on system list and I'll go ahead and turn term ask on to as well. Now uh, once we do that we can see Bob's logged into the system and admin is logged into the system here. And there you go. And at any time you can hit data to talk and that will throw you into a term talk with the user that you ask. Answer. Let's try monitor run. Well, what's what? What's monitor mode? Well, monitor mode, very simply, is the ability to share someone else's screen with another user. So let's say, for example, that I want to show, let's go ahead and I will use this to actually demonstrate the author mode here. So I will go ahead and uh, shift lab to go into monitor mode, enter monitor mode. And at this particular point, the next thing that I do the very next thing that I do, we will see on on the other user's screen here, just like this. Now, author sign-ons are very special. Author sign-ons allow you uh, to write code, and it actually has a very different uh, has a very different interface to the menu system here. You have to know exactly what lessons you want to attach to. Now, any lessons that you can type in the go command in the main menu, you can also type here, and you can also get the menu by going into the menu here, actually, sorry about that, and typing data after the lesson. With If you just want to execute a particular lesson, you have to hit the data key. So menu and data, and we get the we get the main menu screen. Of course, we shift, shift stop, and we come back out to the system mode, uh, to the system mode here, to the author mode. This is saying system mode because I'm actually logged in as administrator here, and it's indicating that fact. Uh, we also get a uh, little bit of statistics out here as far as uh, the amount of memory that's actually used up by a particular lesson. So if we go in and we want to edit, uh, for example, the menu system here, we actually are taken into now the main part of the editor, which divides up the individual parts of the system into individual code blocks. You can take and page through them go forward, go back, 
18 parts have been allocated for this particular menu because I expect it to grow. By default, when you ask for lessons, you'll get uh, roughly five parts by default. If you need more, let me know. If you need less, I can shrink it back down. No big deal. So once you go into a particular section, let's say, for example, we want to look at the code that drives the main menu, you're presented with uh, you're presented with the tutor code here. Now, at any given time, you can use a number of you can use the help key to explain how editing works, how all these things happen, etc. Go back, or back here. Uh, you can have context sensitive help as part of the term service. Uh, what command do we want to pull in here? Let's say I don't know what uh, what jump out is. And now you have context sensitive help that you can use as you're typing in the editor here uh, to look at to, to basically look at something. This is especially helpful when you're smack dab in the middle of editing a line. This happens anywhere and it's very pervasive. If you need the full uh, if you need the full programming guide, it's available. And you can either look for specific features or you can actually go all the way to the main screen here and work your way through the individual menu items so you can figure out all of the different aspects of the system. So all this documentation is available for, for authors to be able to take and write their own software on the system. Just as a matter of just as a matter of course. And of course, everything comes back to the editor here when we're done. And when we're done, we can shift stop. It will take and condense the lesson. Since it's already being used, I can't do that right now, so fine, we'll just back out of it and back out again. Uh, some of the other some of the other interesting editors that are available we'll go ahead and use Othello for this one and uh, we have a character set editor which allows you to take and make programmable characters that you can use to cut down on transmission time as well as provide a form of bitmap graphics. So. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at those are the characters that you that I have available that I can redefine. The ones that I've used thus far, you can see the ones for creating the individual Othello pieces, both solid and outlined. And we can go in and, and if we wanted to, we could modify individual ones. And as you can see here, just basically your typical fat bits, move around, turn on the bits, move things around, and at any given time you can inspect to see your changes. You can see that the, this, the Othello pieces are made up of multiple characters, so to facilitate that, they've actually added a multiple character add inspect modify. And in here, we can specify the characters that we want to look at all at once. In this case, I want to take and modify the solid Othello character, so I will ch choose the characters that make up those one. letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. And you can see the drawing of that character down on the lower uh, right-hand corner of the screen here. We're done. We go ahead, hit data. And now we have the ability to edit um, these characters as one cohesive entity, which allows you to make uh, much more concise drawing characters much easier than otherwise possible. So that's the character set editor. Yes, I want to I want to quit without changing edit without without saving changes. No problem. And there's also what's called the. Uh, the carrot the uh, screen designer the screen designer is really neat because it allows you to um, because it really allows you to um, 
create your uh, individual screens that you use in your tutor uh, lessons individually. So uh, let's say, for example, just as a quick example, I'll go in and look at the logo for the games menu. You'll see that we have a series of draw commands here. And these were generated by the screen designer and literally inserted into my code when I exited the screen designer. I'm going to take and bring them back in, starting at line 2 and going to line 27 here. And you can see that a uh, that you have a full blown screen editor here ready to work. You can modify individual points. Uh, you can take and create new shapes very quickly. Let's say we want to make a circle. No problem. Bam. Go out. Push next. Bam. Okay. There's a circle. Uh, Etc. Just bam. Bye bye. I don't want to, to save any of this, so I will just take and shift stop this. Boom. So you have the ability to quickly make uh, to quickly make screen designs really quickly and effectively. So that's the crux of the programming environment in a nutshell. I'll go ahead and finish this demonstration here by uh, just doing a quick run through uh, of the system on the Atari system, only for only for a minute or two, just so you can see kind of the difference here of what this looks like on an actual Atari system. So with that, we'll go ahead and. Uh, fade over to my Atari setup here. Let me get this guy here. And we can see our uh, Atari demonstration. I have here the uh, learning phone uh, cartridge inserted. This is running inside of an emulator currently, but this does work on real hardware too if you have the appropriate connection to the internet. More about that on the website. So. I will take and draw, uh, log into, hold on, right window, and I'll use my local, my local host name for this system right now. For most people, this would be ATDI errata dot online, but since I'm natted, I have to use the local bit. No problem. We get a sign-on message here. And this is actually running at a simulated 1200 bits per second. So you can see what this would have looked like back in the day. You can see the individual bits and pieces drawing. And let's go ahead and log in. Now, I'm already logged in somewhere else, so I can just as easily take and knock myself off the other station. Once we're here, now we see we've popped back into the games menu. And voila, here we go. You can see since this is a touch-based display, we have a crosshair here, here so we can use our joystick to uh, select whatever we want to be able to play. Press data, start in data, start in D. So go ahead and just do a quick deal here. I'll do short game. First we have to place the ships. Pick orientations, vertical here. Oops, sorry. axes backwards and as you can see here 
you now have, um, you know, you just sit here, posi pl positioning here. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get all these positioned. One up and down. Put him over here. Now the game's been set. And now we get to play against the computer. Yeah, I'll go first. And we start choosing coordinates. Missed. Oh, and he got my battleship. Oh, and he got that again. Oh, and he got me again. And he shot off the board. Okay, that gives me an opportunity. N missed. And he gets my battleship. So, you know, at any given time, for any display that's not a touch based display, you can use the fire button to zoom in and see. Uh, a more panned out version of the display. It can help if you're having issues reading. And so on. So we'll go ahead and just stop here. Data to continue working. We'll go ahead and go back to we'll go ahead and go back I tried very hard to make this as optimized as I possibly could for running on something as low as a 1200 baud connection here. I hope you guys uh, are okay with this. So we'll go ahead and go into, uh, I'll just take and jump right to the notes section. And as we, I mean really, as we can see, the experience is very much the same. Putting a 64 character display on an Atari 8 bit and doing a pretty darn good job of it with graphics and everything else. Labs, responses, etc. Coming back, we'll go ahead and continue. And even the the monitor mode, all of those features work exactly uh, work exactly as they uh, as they do on other systems as well. So I'm on the, on the P term as well. Only difference here is that there's there's no color, no problem. the talk system, etc. So I hope this has been a uh, an informative demonstration here. I will be taking and making better versions of this video and refining all of this as time goes on. I just wanted to get something out so you guys could see why would you come onto the system in the first place? I really hope that you can see even from this limited demonstration that uh, this system is uh, extremely advanced uh, and uh, definitely a leg up uh, on a tip typical uh, traditional BBS type system. It's multi-user, it's multi-programmable, it's extremely pervasive in its documentation, uh, it um, it's it's basically it was way ahead of its time and I'm glad to be able to help to preserve this for anybody who wants to use this particular system and as I said before um, and I've mentioned this before in other places um, this particular uh, this particular service I'm running this out of my own pocket and it's running here entirely within my lab uh, I am not going to charge access or any other fees for the service uh, ever. I don't. Uh, that's never going to change. And uh, I'm providing this out of just a sheer love of the system, and I want people to see what this system is and and what it's and, and what it's about. The one thing I do ask is that people who are interested in becoming uh, systems personnel to help me out please contact me and 
and ask for author signups, ask for system signups, uh, and we'll all work together to try and teach each other how to administer this particular system and uh, to make this place a, um, a really nice online community for uh, interested individuals. Until next time, guys, uh, have fun.